We start with one of uh, Seattle's finest restaurants and a, a dish that, if you've heard of it, you're one up on me because I never have. We have Thierry, uh, Chef Thierry Rotoro with us today, and but the, the nominators, Ann Sillen and Ann, uh, the, the, pro the product is, uh, what do we call it, a martini of spot prawns. How did you get into, how did you even think about that? Well, when I went to Rover's restaurant, it was one of the dishes that I got when I ate there, and it was magical. It comes out in this martini glass, and you've got caviar and spot prawns, which are super, super sweet, and a cucumber salad. I mean, it was just so great in terms of the different textures. Now, you listen to this young lady because she has a master's degree from NYU in food studies, and she knows good food. So, I'll tell you what, we're going to put it to the test. We're going to have uh, the chef make this for you, and then we're going to call you back in and let you try it and see if, see if he, he produced. Okay? Wonderful. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, she should talk me up. Terry, uh, <laughs> where did the idea for this come from? Well, the idea is I'm a, I'm a martini kind of guy. You know, I think once a day at least that keeps the doctor away to have a good martini. So, the idea was how do I involve my booze addiction and my uh, food addiction? <laughs> well, you're known as the chef in the hat, so yes. uh, the hat is in place. The hat is in place. So, Greg, uh, the chef is right here, and Greg is right here. Yep. And I'm so excited to be cooking with Terry Rotaro, one of my favorite chefs in Seattle. So, this dish is, I think, is a great um, hostess dish. You know, you invite people over for a cocktail party, sure. you know, a couple of hours. You know, it's presented in a martini glass, like uh, Anne was saying. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little. You know, nice presentation. It's a very simple dish to make in terms of preparation because you can have everything ready ahead of time, which is what most of you at home when you're trying to do a party makes you really nervous. So you want to make sure then you have the stuff ready ahead of time so you can actually enjoy your guests and cook or look like you're cooking. Well, you know, yeah. so but your mise en place. You have the mise en place. Everything that's in everything the recipe in is right here. It's quite simple All of range. a preparation. You know, you have shallots which have been chopped. You have the garnishes, and you're going to use at the end. You have the mustard, Dijon mustard, that we're going to use uh, for the dressing, because it's a dressing that's made with vodka, mustard, and olive oil. It's a very simple dressing. Mix the whole thing together, so now you have a dressing, which you will be pouring on top of the cucumber that have been diced, really small. Sounds really refreshing. So what do we, what do, we do first? Well, the first thing you should do is get wonderful spot prawn. I went to Mutual Fish this morning in Rainier Valley and get those wonderful prawns fresh from Alaska. Mm -hmm. The first thing you want to do is obviously peel them. Now, these have eggs on it, the roll right here. Oh, yeah. And so those are nice and fresh. If you get enough time, you should just take a pot of water and take the roll out and poach the, oh, the really? roll for a couple of minutes in the boiling water, then take them out and drain them and use that as a garnish on top of your shrimp. It will make a crunchy little flavor. Uh -huh. Now, today, you know, the luck of the draw is I got eggs today, but sometimes I don't get <laughs> eggs. So instead, I put real caviar on top of the spot prawn. Uh -huh. oh, I nice. use fresh caviar. And that's a nice little saltiness that comes right through the dish. So, do you, want, do you mind peeling a few of this? Not at all. There no, you go. I'd love and to. also, when you do uh, shrimp at home, you should always keep your, sh your shells. Because the shell can make a quick stock on the fire. You put that in a pot of water. Oh, a, a couple, a couple uh, condiments, you know, bay leaf, thyme, mm -hmm. a little bit of water. Bring that to a boil. Cook it for a couple of minutes. Now you got a shrimp stock. It's a very, you know, when you're cooking, you should always use everything you have. So you could make a little seafood bisque or something like that? Well, you like could, at least you'd have a little stock you could use in your soup, you could use right. in sauce. Give you a really you know. nice taste to a, yeah. a, a rather Yeah, it's a good stock. Yeah. yeah. So the other items that we need to do is to peel a cucumber. How are we doing on the peeling of the shell? Good? Oh, they yeah. slip right off. So, Just like a little again, jacket. if you can't find the spot prawn, which are a little bit hard to find because they're very, they're wanted very, they're very highly. very seasonal. Yeah. yeah, very seasonal. So if you can't find them, there is still always the tiger prawn you can find in the market. You know, the fresh pond prawns from mm -hmm. the um, Gulf prawn. Or the Gulf yes. prawn, yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are quite good. Those are very good, they're very sweet. There are some very large uh, good yeah, prawn, uh, prawns coming from India now, too, that, that are available. In the right, state. right. You can find those frozen, you know, and you thaw them mm -hmm. out. The most important part is to find a good shrimp, a good go. Um, you don't want to get a shrimp that is too big. I mean, there's shrimp that are really big on the market. Right. They, are, they don't really fit in that no, presentation. These are just lovely, though. And I, I like the fact that they're wild and, you know, right. they're not, you know, wrecking, You want to try to get the local habit. wild product as much as possible. So you want to peel the cucumber to make the salad with it. Now that's not a standard cucumber. That, that's what, what they call an English cucumber. Is that English right? cucumber. Now why would you use that as opposed to the cucumber that we're really normal? Nobody really knows because <laughs> really, I mean, why, you know, why would you call it English as opposed to French? <laughs> I, well, I, I, Nobody I, would never know that. No, I'm just kidding. That's just the style of the cucumber and it's called an English cucumber. Um, I, I really, I don't know the answer to the question of why it's called English. Uh, maybe because you don't have to cook it. 
Well, I'm not sure why it's called system. English, but I, I think it's better for um, a dish like this because it's a little bit denser. Right. Not so loose and watery right. as the standard cube. Exactly. So the idea is to take the cucumber and dice it. So you want to cut the cucumber in half first, and of course you want to get rid of the seeds. So you take a spoon and you just slide the spoon right through the cucumber ah. like so. See? Right. Wonderful. Did you know about this, George? No, I didn't know about taking seeds out. I but really didn't. And, and it's much easier. It's, it's much easier when you eat, you know, because if you're having a cocktail party and you're going like, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> it's really not very, you know. You put a damper on conversation. Yeah, I mean, for it, sure. it really, it would put a serious damper on your conversation. So what you want to do is cut the cucumber lengthwise, not too thick, so you can actually cut long sticks like this and cut right through it the other way, so you end up with small dicing. Now, of course, you're looking at me doing this and you're wondering how, you know, it's just 34 years of practice. And he's still got all So the stop now. <laughs> if you want to cook for next Saturday, stop now. So you end up with your cucumber salad, which you put into a bowl, mm -hmm. and then we're going to make the dressing right oh, after that. that. so good. Yeah, you know, fresh cucumber is very refreshing. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Okay. So now we have the salad. We have the shrimp that are cooked. I mean, uh, that's all peeled. Okay. And then we're going to make the dressing. The dressing is quite simple. Just take some Dijon mustard. Now you want to use the, the yellow, bright, spiky mustard. You yeah. don't want to use the grain mustard. Now is this Most my people think Dijon or... mustard has to be the, the, oh, that the, the, very the good. dark, the, the dark seeds in it. Well, um, you know, Dijon mustard, the Dijon mustard that I'm talking about, and I always refer to as Dijon, is that bright yellow that is extremely uh, spiky. It's got a very strong flavor to it. And it's really named after the, the city in the area that it's from. That is correct, than, from the Dijon part of France. Right. So you're not talking about bright yellow like French's mustard yellow. Not just, that kind of industry or yellow. Just light, natural sort of, like the... See, uh, you can feel, oh, yeah. you, can, you can smell the, mm. the bite to this. So then you put the vodka in there. I'm gonna preheat your pan Yeah, that's a you. great idea. And then you put a little bit of olive oil in there. You whisk thoroughly like this. And now, you get a now use a Moroccan olive oil, that's a very uh, nice flavored now, olive oil. When we get to the recipe, there's some idea of how much olive oil is there. Oh yeah, yeah. everything is in the recipe. Because <laughs> you, you start pouring that I, I'm working like my mom right now. You yeah, know, I a bit of this, more of that. Now this recipe is in the KCTS Chef's Recipe Book, but it's also right. in the Rover's, Rover's Cookbook, cookbook which Absolutely. is so beautiful. I think you did such George, a great job George, you want to pour some dressing book. on top of that cucumber, please? Sure. So, in the pan, we're going to have a warm pan and we're going to saute those shrimp. A little olive oil. A little salt and pepper. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil. And we're going to finish it with a little bit of chopped shallots. Nice. I like to put a little bit of chopped shallots in there, give it a flavor. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. I love the way these spot prawns always have that little bit of orange. Right, they, they release beta uh, carotene or something. Yeah, they, they release it's so, they, some oil. It looks so alive. They're very. And they're so just so, so good. sweet and good. Uh, oh, so the, that's not hot enough. Where's our oil? <laughs> That's not hot enough. <laughs> trying. I'm trying. I was trying to go it's too fast here. Okay. Just put a little bit but of water. But once you have that hot pan, you don't want to leave them in very long, do you? No, you want, I mean, it should be extremely hot. And that wasn't quite hot enough, but you want to make sure you do it very hotter hot. as we speak. Here we go. And so the just hot pan of would give it a nice crisp surface exactly. without making them cook all the way this through. This is what happens when you cook on TV. <laughs> <laughs> you put that in a bowl. Oh, just like that. No just more than that. Oh, no, no, not more than that. Turn now, off the fire. if you overcook them? Can you turn off the fire so we don't yeah, burn? What, what happens if, if, you, if you overcook it? If you overcook it, you'll end up with a uh, Michelin tire. <laughs> <laughs> Something that will be a little, a little tough, bit... folks, a little tough. A little bit rubbery. You only get the Michelin tire at Rovers. In, yes. In, uh, an American the, restaurant, you get the Goodyear tire. That's correct. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot about that one, too. <laughs> Either way, oh, take, pick up your tire. <laughs> so you toss a little bit of dressing right on top of the shrimp. And then now we're going to work on the presentation. It's a little bit of, you know, you want to clean as you go in the kitchen, I guess. So the presentation is quite, you know, you toss a little bit of that cucumber right in the middle. Lovely cucumber salad. On the shrimp, which has the shallots, we're going to take the shrimp and we're going to intertwine them like this. Oh. Put them right on top of the oh, how cucumber. Romantic. How oh, romantic is right. <laughs> it's like they're hugging each other in there. <laughs> and then for decoration and for final flavoring, we put chervil. Do you ever had chervil before? No. Try this. Now, how's that compared to, say, parsley? Um, Better. It's much more delicate and more flavorful in terms of anise flavor. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of anise and basil in it. Not and of course, as strong as, uh, 
These are little perks from my garden. I just picked that this morning. This you know, is I, little fun I from. love oh. that Rover's the way you always have so much detail in every dish, Terry. It's, you just well, some people call it a pain in the you-know-what, but... <laughs> Um, but it's the attention, you know, I can tell that every time I get a well, dish you know, there. You look like Martha Stewart if you give that to your friend. <laughs> Who doesn't want to look like Martha Stewart? She Let doesn't see. look half bad, I'll tell you. She's, uh, well, she's, I, she's, I look that good when I'm 60. I look that good when I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am 40. If I did, if I so, you always look good. How about that? Nap. Elegant. They don't present it. One thing, it's just forgotten on there. Oh, oh, the nobody's here. reminding oh, oh. me of this. I the best part of that dish. Sure it's okay. Yeah, you will. You know, I've heard that caviar is an acquired taste, but I loved it from the very first time I ever tasted it. It's an acquired I, taste, I, and I got I it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know who we've kind of forgotten <laughs> here is Anne, so and, and we need to bring her in to take a little test. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to show you another trick. Try. You, another trick. Look at this. I got a trick up my sleeve. I'm leaving the main kitchen to come yeah. back. I know I was told not to do that, but. He's been in the refrigerator so, <laughs> again, folks. I'm back. Keep him. I'm back with you. <laughs> so, here's a different presentation. I got this thing at uh, Crate and Barrel, you know, they, they get all of those tools to play with. So you now you're definitely going to look like Martha Stewart. I took some ice, put a little red color right in it, chop the ice, put it in the bowl, put the cucumber back on top, the spot prong goes right on top of that, and a little bit more caviar. Now you say red colorant, but I noticed you use beet juice for the oh, red. Oh, you know the truth. Yeah, that's so that's so. I cool. use <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was TV. We could lie. That's what what happened? That, no, that's what Greg's here for. Oh, no okay. lies, no okay. lies. Okay. And let's you back so, in here. Because TV. I'm a natural kind Not of guy, lies, I couldn't use colorant. I use beet juice. But it's to so color beautiful. The ice. Yes, yeah, it's better than the red dye you know, number seventeen. If more people, I would have seen the dish for Valentine's Day. I think uh, you know. <clears throat> Terry, we have Ann here to tell you whether or not you did good. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ann, uh -huh. please, <laughs> let's see if it's reminiscent. I'm going to give you a little herb. So. Thank oh, you you're so much. nice. <laughs> Everyone's I'm very, watching I'm very nervous. <laughs> 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 mm. That's really wonderful. Yep, that got it? Mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. oh. Glad we got it. <laughs> so glad we got it. The restaurant? No, you guys are not allowed to try this. This is oh, my yeah. dish. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I only want the caviar. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll take I'll, that and you take the other. So, you, you guys going to fight over this? No, I'll just take them. You know, really, I can put another one in there. Let's go for this. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> mm. How's wow. that, George? No, this Wonderful. is an American caviar. Oh, that's so good. Now, this recipe is going to be in the book. Absolutely. And, and you know what's really neat? You have no idea what this tastes like until you really try it. That's a surprise taste, and it is wonderful. 